Mayor Allen, it is now 6.30, so you may start the meeting when you're ready. Thank you. Can I have a mover and seconder to call the meeting to order, please? Councillor Ma Chapman and Councillor Cabral that the regular meeting the Council of the Township of Springwater of April 20, 2022 come to order at 6.30 p.m. All those in favor? It's carried due to COVID. Council and staff and participants are taking the necessary steps to limit in-person meetings. And therefore we are streaming, live streaming the meeting that is being held electronically. You can watch the meeting live on the township's website, website at www.springwater.ca. You can listen to the meeting live from a telephone during the meeting by calling 647-558-0588 and using the following meeting ID, 842-2647-8319. This option is available during the meeting and for those unable to watch the live stream can review the meeting at their convenience by watching the video on the Township's YouTube channel. Council, are there any disclosure of pecuniary interests this evening? Seeing none. Uh, we had a deputation, but that delegation was withdrawn by the delegate. So we moved to question period. And as is outlined on the agenda, uh, questions can be asked of council uh, to make comments regarding items on the agenda. Uh, they can be submitted in writing to the clerk by noon of the day of the meeting or request to uh, submit the question uh, on on the Zoom meeting it can be submitted as well. As I said, the details are provided in the agenda. Clerk Ainsworth, have there been submissions received for this evening? Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. There has been one submission received for this evening's meeting. It is from John Spring at 2438 County Road 92. And he writes, I have a question to the mayor and deputy mayor of Springwater Township. I would like to know why they are supporting an MZO for the Springwater Business Park by Snow Valley Yorkwood Limited. Putting an industrial park at that location mm -hmm. is against the new official plan that Springwater Township has developed. So again, why is it so hard for the mayor and deputy mayor to let this go away? It does not fit our official plan. Enough has been said, no further action is needed. The mayor and deputy mayor have a chance to show their support for our official plan by supporting the two motions, 10.3 and 10.4, that have been brought forward by councillors Moore and Cabral. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. And as stated, the delegation has been withdrawn, so no further discussion on this is warranted as it has not come forward to council this evening. So moving on to 5.1, the minutes of council. Can I have a mover and seconder to prove the minutes, please? No. Councillor Cabral, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. It's the minutes of the regular meeting of council of April 6, 2022. All, uh, any questions, comments with respect to these? All those in favor of approving these minutes? That is carried. 5.2 is the minutes of boards, committees, and organizations. A mover and seconder for those, please. Councillor Ma Chapman, Councillor Moore. There are two minutes, being the minutes of the Efficiency and Service Delivery Audit Ad Hoc Committee meeting, September 23, 2021, and minutes of the Recreation Advisory Committee meeting of February 22nd, 2022. Uh, should that read, um, it is... Uh, the first one is September 23rd, uh, 2021, right, Clerk? Yes. Uh, any comments on those? All those in favor? That is carried. Correspondence and information items, there are none. So we go to action reports at seven, item seven. And the action reports are seven two through seven six. Can I have a mover and seconder to get these on the floor, please? Councillor Cabral, Councillor Ritchie, uh, any questions or desire to pull any of these? Councillor Ritchie? Yes, Mayor Allen, I'd like to pull seven two, seven three, and seven four. Seven four. Okay. Uh, any other? Questions or comments? 
All right, then the motion is that the action report 72 through 76 be received, that the recommendations contained therein be approved as presented for 75B07-20 uh, and B08-20 and B09-20 and B10-20 pertaining to Windstar Developments Inc. Development Agreement Authorization Report 7.6 SU2008-001 Elmvale Village, phase two request for extension of draft plan approval with the exception of 7.2, 7.3, and 7.4. Uh, did you have a card up, Councilor Hanna? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'm sorry I missed. I wanted to speak to uh, 7.5, please. Okay, so we'll pause in the motion and go ahead uh, with respect to 7.5, Councillor Anna. Uh, thank you for your patience. I, I'm hoping I got the right one here. Um, 7.5, I believe it's an extension for um, two years. Is that correct? It's an extension. Uh... Uh, I don't have the report pulled up. You know what, Mayor? I, I might be jumping the gun. It might be 7.6. It's an extension for two years. Uh, My apologies, it's 7.6. 7.6. Yes, I, I just had a question about that uh, before we approach. Go ahead. Yeah, go um, ahead. So in the past, we, we've um, set a standard for other people that come forward or ask for extensions more than one year. Uh, to uh, go back and, and uh, ask them to um, accept an extension for one point or for one year. And I see in this one here, they're asking for an extension um, for two years. So my question being is, I would suggest that council to be consistent with our rulings to other developers should be maintaining the, the approval for one year extension and not two. Director Spagnol. Oh, oh sorry, Clerk Ainsworth. Uh, you're probably gonna say we should pull that, right? Yes, please. Okay, uh, we will pull that. So pause on that question. We have a motion then that is uh, dealing with uh, two, three, four, just 7.5. And then we will pull each of seven, two, three, four, and six. Everybody clear on that? All those in favor? That is carried. So because we were just talking about it, we'll go to 7.6. Uh, Councillor Hannes posed his question. So Director Spagnol, oh, a mover and seconder to get this on the floor. Uh, Councillor Moore, Councillor Ma Chapman, Director Spagnol, please. Thank you, Mayor Allen, through you to Councillor Hanna. Uh, the, the Planning Act allows for extensions of one to three years. It's really at Council's discretion. So if uh, if council wishes to reduce uh, the extension to one year, it's definitely within council's purview to do so. May I ask, uh, what did the um, uh, the developer say he needed two years, and and for what, uh, Director Spagnol? Amir, uh, on the developer is 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 in the process of clearing conditions of approval. It's their estimation that the conditions uh, that the two years would provide for sufficient time for them to clear those conditions. Um, there's some conditions related to uh, stormwater management and other and other engineering type considerations. Um, as I noted earlier, really, if if council if it's if it's council's wish to have that uh, reduced to one year, um, staff is not in a position to, position to object. Um, it's really up to council to decide whether or not it feels one year versus two years is appropriate. Follow on, Councillor Hanna. Uh, thank you. Uh, my point being is in the past other. Developers have come forward with asking for two and three years. We've we've set the the president by, if you like, by this council that we would uh, go one year at a time, and hopefully that would help move uh, development on. So I would suggest to be consistent as our decisions in the past. We need to make it one year. Uh, Councillor Ma Chapman. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I was just going to um, to you to Director Spagna. Have we had a, had any in the last three and a half years? Um, on my term, um, extended to two or three years, or it's always been one. 
Director Spagnol. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, through to Councillor Ma Chapman. I would really have to take a look back to see what the um, what was done for each of the subdivisions. I do know that council has in the past required uh, and, and revised those extensions to one year. Um, I couldn't I couldn't really uh, provide a number as to as to how many were for two, three, or, or one year. But but council has in the past allowed for and re and required uh, or provided only a one year extension. Follow on, Councillor Ma Chapman. Thank you, Mayor Allen. So if we um, change it to one year, like Councillor Hen, they can come back in a year and extend it one more year again, correct? That is correct. Yeah. Director Spagnol's nodding his head. Uh, right. Uh, so for the mover and seconder, uh, Clerk Ainsworth, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. So this would need to be an official amendment with a mover and seconder. Yes. So uh, Councillor Hannah, you're moving that amendment? Yes. Yes. Seconding that amendment, Councillor Ma Chapman. All those in favor? That is carried. Okay, moving back up to 7.2, which is um, the uh, proposed littering bylaw. Mover and uh, Clerk Ainsworth, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, so with 7.6, uh, there would just need to be a vote on the main motion as amended, please. Okay. Um, I won't read out the main motion. We just amended it. So all those in favor of uh, 7.6 as amended. That is carried. Mover and seconder for 7.2, please. Councillor Ritchie moves, seconder. Councillor Ma Chapman, over to you, Councillor Ritchie. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Through to the fire chief, I have two questions. Uh, no, in no way does this hamper the effects of a farmer wanting to burn his brush or anything like that. I just want to be, I want a clarification on that. Uh, chief Kirk. Through you, uh, Mayor Allen, to uh, Councillor Ritchie, you're correct. Second question. Uh, I, I support this, like I, I walk every morning and the amount of garbage on our concession roads is horrendous. And, uh, and, and, and it takes me a step further to ask, is there any way we could put signs up to, to, to educate the public about, you know, it, you know, about a fine or whatever it is to pick their garbage up? Is there you know, I, I support this and can we take it a step further and putting signs up or, or, or maybe phase it in if it's gonna cost money, which I'm sure it is. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on that? Um, I'll start with uh, CAO uh, Schmidt on that, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you to Councillor Ritchie. Councillor Ritchie, it's something staff can definitely take a look at and if, uh, if, if that's the direction of council, we could come back with a report uh, indicating what the cost could be to the township uh, to do so. I, I know uh, there are other municipalities and I know the township has uh, participated, I believe in, in the past on uh, um, the, the official title is escaping me right now, but it, I think it's a, a spring cleanup or a sp uh, spring um, yeah, cleanup day or something like that. I know other municipalities have have uh, have done that, so that's another way that we might be able to promote uh, individuals within the community to assist in trying to, uh, you know, uh, clean up the area, if you will. So that's another uh, option. Follow on, Councillor Ritchie. Yes, Varel. I just want to follow up. I'm glad you're bringing that uh, to light, uh, Jeff. Um, I, I know the high school has a cleanup day. At least they used to. Of course, this COVID thing just threw a wrench into everything, but. Normally every year they'd have a clean up and uh, maybe be moving forward. It might be one way for them to get, gain community hours. They we were to pick a spot and leave that up to staff and whatever. Uh, there's lots of uh, stop signs, pre-warning signs uh, in, uh, on the concession roads and what have you that if we were to make the sign up and, and attach it to that, uh, I just to see what the cost is because Garbage is is a problem. There's just no doubt about it whatsoever. I know I've picked lots out of the garbage out of our ditches as well too. It's just on our concessional, so uh, it'd be interesting. I don't know if you need a motion for that. If you do, 
I'll uh, throw something together, but uh, I'd like to move forward with something like that if it's possible. Thank you. Okay, I'll go to Clerk Ainsworth and Manager Dean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Through you to Councillor Ritchie. Um, that item would be perfect for an item for future consideration and can be presented at this evening's meeting. Or right. alternatively, um, you can also ask for an amendment to this motion, but either, either avenue will work. Manager Dean. <coughs> Thank you, Mary Ellen, through you to Councillor Cabral and the rest of Council. So EDHS will be doing their EDHS day, they call it. Again, this year, they will be doing it May 11th. They will have a group working at Heritage Park. Um, I'm not sure of the other exact locations and duties they'll be doing throughout the town, but they are planning for that day currently. Follow on, Councillor Ritchie. Well, it's fresh in everybody's mind. Why don't we just amend it that we, uh, that uh, staff report back with a report back with a with a report regarding uh, putting signs up in the municipality. Whatever way you Clerk, want to dress it up and put a face on it. Clerk Ainsworth, can you, uh, she's crafting some wording. A seconder for that amendment. Councillor Ma Chapman. Well, that's being done. I saw some other yellow cards. Uh, Councillor Ma Chapman, go ahead. Thank you, Mary Ellen. And just um, quote, on. Um, Councillor Ritchie's um, saying, I do believe that I like that idea. Um, the Menacing School this year is for Earth Day is doing cleanup around Menacing, but I believe that most CRAs do a spring cleanup within their community, but not on the trails. But I also have known that I've walked even today and just with all the water that ran through on the in the ditches near the storm water is a lot of garbage. So hopefully with the signs that can all be cleaned up and hopefully for the future, it doesn't get that way. Thank you, Councillor Hanna. Uh, thank you, and, and through the chair to uh, Ministry or Municipal Law Enforcement Officer Killington. Um, in the past, I've had to pass on to staff complaints about property standards issues. And there's always the same resident, uh, at least once a year that we get a number of complaints about. My understanding and the results of my, my passing on the complaints in the past, that staff hasn't, been really able to do too much because we don't have a property standards bylaw. And I believe that's what was my error. I believe that's what we created in 2014. So my question um, is this new bylaw that you're creating, will that give staff the authority to help deal with these properties? And I, I'm sure you know the one property that uh, you had to deal with a number of times. Will that give you the authority to, uh, you need to be able to take some action there? MLEO Killington, please. Uh, through you, Mayor Allen, to Councillor Hannah. Um, currently, right now, with the Clean Yards bylaw that was passed, sorry, Clean Safe Properties bylaw was passed in 2014, and it was a minimum standard bylaw that we did pass. Um, however, we are right now currently looking at a property standards bylaw. It is with staff, and we are um, right now it's in draft. So hopefully by, um, you know, by the summer, we will bring it to council for consideration and that property that you are referring to would fall under the property standards bylaw. Um, there are a few um, concerns uh, within the clean, safe properties bylaw that we currently have would regulate some of the matters that are um, on that property right now. Thank you. Councilor Moore. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. It was really just very similar to Councillor Hannah's question um, and referring to whether or not this would be complaint based or if it would be a more proactive approach. Um, Clerk Ainsworth, uh, how did you express the wording? Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. And I do have an answer uh, for Councillor Moore's inquiry. Um, the department right now works on a complaint basis uh, to move to a proactive uh, enforcement for certain aspects would be uh, council direction. So when the property standards bylaw comes forward, council can make that um, that decision to um, to have proactive enforcement. But we would also need to look at resources and staff capacity at the same time in conjunction um, with uh, with a proactive enforcement approach. Thank you. Quick Gainsworth, please uh, go ahead and read the motion as amended. Uh, the amendment would state um, that uh, it would be added and that staff report on the costs associated with no littering signs throughout the township. Yeah. 
Good. Okay. All right. We have a mover and seconder uh, that the report from the supervisor of the municipal law enforcement regarding the proposed littering bylaw dated April 20, 2022 be received and that the current waste control bylaw 97-127 be rescinded and that the littering bylaw be presented for consideration at the April 20, 2022 regular meeting of council plus what clerk Ainsworth just read as to the amendment. All those in favor? That is carried. That suffices for that, Clerk Ainsworth. Okay. 7.3 is the baseball fee subsidy. Mover and second to get this on the floor. Councillor Ritchie, Councillor Ma Chapman. Councillor Ritchie, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I, I've read this over and, uh, and geez, you know, like, I, I, uh, like, you know, it's a good report. There's other municipalities that's not charging anything, but I really don't think, well, let, let me just stop there for a minute. This $9, is that $9 an hour for the whole team to use uh, the, the ball field? Is that how that works? Or is it $9 for every person? Manager Dean. Thank you, Mayor Allen, through you to Councillor Ridgey. That would be $9 per hour. Um, so yes, I'm sorry, $9 per hour per booking. Follow on. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I have a hard time. I, I can't support this because like at $9 an hour and if you're out there for a couple hours, so, okay, so you blew up 20 bucks, but you, how many kids were out there playing and how many people came out to watch it? And, but aside from that, if we were to take the person that we're paying and the truck and the trailer and that $30,000 grass cutting unit or maybe 40,000, if we added that all up and what it costs us to go out there and cut that and maintain it and keep it all up, it could be 140, could be $180 an hour. I don't think what we're charging is horrendous at all. And I'm 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 dumbfounded as to why we're gonna we're gonna waive these fees for for such a nominal amount and what we're paying. Somebody Correct me here. Like I have fallen and hit my head a couple of times this winter, but I just can't get this, can't sort this out. Can somebody help me with this? Uh, Manager uh, Dean, maybe you could, can you round out the uh, background on this anymore? Um, probably summarizing a bit what was in the report, but so essentially the minor sports has requested this. It came through uh, Hillsdale Athletics and they have requested it. Um, so again, the background is that some townships around us do not charge a fee. Others do charge a fee um, and some waive the subsidy completely. So this year um, in particular, uh, one of the reasons it was brought to light is Hillsdale School is uh, performing some construction at the school. So they will not be able to use the baseball diamond at Hillsdale School this year. So they are looking for additional time on township diamonds. Um, menacing minor, or sorry, menacing public school may have some impacts to the baseball diamond um, pending some construction they are looking at doing as well. So that is not determined whether it will uh, have any impact on the baseball diamond, um, but it is uh, potentially an impact that could affect the uh, menacing minor ball as well. So um, this request has come forward um, in regards to um, the schools not, not being available this year, um, but also in regards to um, what they have looked at too from other surrounding municipalities. Um, and again, just a, a request um, they are seeking for an additional subsidy. So minor sports is already subsidized from the adult rate. This would be an additional subsidy um, and depending on what council's decision was, um, could be uh, anywhere from taking the subsidy all the way to 100% or anywhere in between what it sits at approximately at 25% right now from the adult rate. Councilor Cabral. Thank you, Mayor Allen. My comments with respect to this is that we have lots of facilities that we charge a fee to utilize. And that fee doesn't mean anything really because everybody can play at our ball diamonds. What it provides these particular folks is exclusivity to run their league at a township uh, facilities. 
And I would also hazard to guess, you know, we're talking about Nursery Park and some of our other ones. It's the minor ball people that tend to be the ones that are seeking uh, maintenance on a more regular basis. Uh, even according to the report, uh, we do more when they're playing than we would if, if it was just an open field. <clears throat> so my, my thoughts is it's not a whole lot. And at the end of the day, once you uh, start subsidizing here and subsidizing there, you know, maybe we should just simply not charge anybody anything for any of our recreational facilities. And I don't think that bodes well for Springwater Township. Uh, these folks played at the school and I get that. However, now they want to play at Springwater Township's uh, diamond. <clears throat> and I think it's playing favoritism to give them uh, an opportunity that we haven't provided in the past. And I really don't, to be quite frank with you, I don't see any relevance to the fact that some of these other townships charge zero. I have no idea what kind of maintenance they do on their ball diamonds. So maybe ours are a lot better, but I, I can't support this. I think everybody who uses our facilities, uh, Heritage Park, if I wanna go sit there on a Saturday and somebody's rented it out, they're gonna tell me to leave. If these folks are using it Monday through Thursday in the evening, that means the residents can't go play a pickup game either. So I think it's pretty reasonable to have uh, have these fees in place so that they can have exclusive access to Springwater Township facilities for their league. So that's where I sit. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hanna. Uh, Mayor, I believe uh, Ma Chapman had her card up before me, sir. Okay, Councillor Ma Chapman. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Thank you, Councillor Hanna. Um, I just want to um, also but um, when we talked about it at RAC, we talked about it would be only for this this season. Um, I'm not sure if that was in the report. Um, I did read it, but it would just be for this season and either whether it was 100% or a reduced rate. Um, just to say that minor ball, other than Hillsdale, did run a little bit last year, hasn't run for two years because of COVID. So they're looking at, because they haven't run for two years, to subsidize it and for the season of, of this year, 2022. Um, and also what Manager Dean has said about the Diamond School property. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hanna. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I agree with uh, Councillors Crabell and Councillor Ritchie. Um, and, and I spent a lot of time running different sport leagues in, including baseball and baseball is probably the least expensive sport for a student or a child to to enter into because the, basically all you need is a ball glove sponsors provide the the uh, shirts and in the past i can tell you that teams never had a problem whether it's doing car washes selling chocolate bars whatever raising funds and at ten dollars or less per hour to use that rink if there's 15 kids it's like 66 cents each or or if there's 20 it's 50 cents each so it's insignificant amount of money. And I believe that if we do it for one, as was pointed out by Councilor Cabell, we might as well prepare to be doing it for every. We got a lot of people playing soccer and cutting the grass and maintaining those fields uh, costs a lot of staff um, money as well. So I can't support this. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, Councilor Ma Chapman. Thank you, Mara Allen. Just to, um, on top of our Councilor Hannah, they do pay for umps and their equipment, just not their gloves. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, the motion reads, uh, Councilor Ritchie. Carolyn, I just wanna add, um, I've watched our staff different times over the years and they, they do a very good job of maintaining the, the grass cutting, the parks, uh, like Hillsdale Park. And in our second term, I think uh, we spent $70,000, $80,000 redoing all the lighting out there and uh, making sure it's the right size of lighting. And, and um, I mean, we, that, it, a good park, job well done and good work. And for what we're charging, I, I find this, uh, honestly, I, I think we should have, a re have staff come back and do a report and say, you know, maybe we should take a closer look at this and jack the rates up. Maybe we should be charging 50 bucks an hour, 80 bucks an hour because, and it's still cheap. So I, I find this, anyways, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, and, and through you to Manager Dean. When uh, it was brought up about soccer and other sports, is there any other subsidy that 
Uh, I know that we do subsidize you know, Bell Arena. Are there any other subsidized sports within the municipality? Manager Dean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, through you to Deputy Mayor Coughlin. So all of our minor sports are subsidized currently. So they're subsidized from the adult rate. Um, so that varies a little bit based on the sport and the facility they're using, um, but can be anywhere from 25 to about 45% subsidy that the youth minor sports um, do receive a subsidy from the adult rate. So for example, same minor ice sports, so not just hockey, but figure skating as well, do receive the subsidy on the ice rate. And in 20 2020, 2021, um, in sorry, the 2020-2021 season, there was a subsidy uh, granted to youth minor sports within the Elmville Arena that was an additional subsidy um, from the main subsidy. So um, at that time, the uh, request was made from minor sports that would rent ice at the Elmville Arena to have non-prime time ice rates all season as opposed to paying for prime time ice. So typically about 90% of ice in the winter is booked at prime time rates for youth minor sports and in the season of 2021 sorry 2020 2021 it was um it was approved for those teams to pay the non-prime rate for the full season no matter what time they were booking so i i hope that kind of made sense sorry <laughs> follow on and follow on and then hillsdale minor baseball is about two years new is that correct manager or yep. starting back up again sorry yes Yes, so Hillsdale Minor Baseball did run last season. Um, they did not run the first season um, that we had the pandemic, and I believe they've been in operation for about six years. Okay, I think it's, if I may, I think it's always um, trying to remain competitive when you have new organizations starting up. I know that a lot of people, when they're looking at going to either Elmville to play hockey or to Wasaga Beach to play hockey, there's a difference of about $600. So, we do need to maintain competitiveness. And I think that in the Hillsdale area, if they're looking to attract young kids to come play in Hillsdale rather than maybe the Wyville or LaFontaine kind of areas where there is no fee, we do need to, I, I think, help our associations establish themselves. And if this is a one year that might allow them to, to attract or, and maintain some sort of competitiveness with the neighboring municipalities, I think that this is a great idea. Okay, Councillor Cabral. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I think I would be correct in saying that every recreational team is subsidized in full almost by the residents of Springwater Township. And uh, if we're going to start like we did that for Barry, uh, for Elmville Minor Hockey, that was a COVID, COVID related incident. And uh, we, all, <laughs> we did some other things for residents too. And uh, we're kind of out of that now. I'm actually surprised that the RAC has brought this before council and actually that they uh, reached out for a report on this. I didn't know that uh, RAC was uh, going to involve themselves in financial matters, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, um, RAC, uh, we, we've been trying to encourage uh, any, any uh, proposal, proposed items with respect to recreation to go before RAC and then have them make a recommendation. So that has in the past involved some financial matters. Uh, Midhurst uh, Pavilion is an example. Uh, and uh, so uh, that, that it's, it's, it's not the first time that's happened. Councillor Ma Chapman. Thank you, Mary Allen. I was just um, going to say what you just said. Thank you. Councillor Hanna. Uh, thank you, Mary. And just for clarification, when the residents came forward to um, ask for a pavilion in Midhurst, they didn't go before RAC, and there was members of this council uh, that uh, came and complained because the residents didn't go before RAC because they didn't feel they had to go before RAC because the clerk of the day told them to come before council and make a deputation. So uh, the pavilion authority for the pavilion and the approvals did have nothing to do with RAC. Just wanted to make sure that, that was on the record. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, right. Then... The recommendation is that the report from the manager of recreation, parks and facilities regarding minor baseball fees subsidy dated April 20th, 2022 be received and that the mayor and council consider the request from Hillsdale athletes for consideration of a minor baseball fee subsidy for the 2022 season 
and that the mayor and council consider the recreation advisory committee recommendation that the township wave baseball diamond permitting fees for all minor baseball programs within the township that permit uh, that permit municipal municipally owned and operated ball diamonds. All those in favor? Those opposed? That is defeated. Uh, next is 7.4, which is the start project. Can I have a mover and second to get this on the floor? One of those three, Councillor Cabral. Uh, and Councillor Moore seconded it. Um, Councillor Ritchie. Yes, thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, great report. I support this. Um, there is a spot going out of Allenville East on South Door Lake Road, uh, which is Queen Street East, whatever way you want to call it tonight. If you turn left and go on baseline, right there where the Y River crosses and intersects across the road, uh, there's been a colony of turtles. I know I've stopped and helped them. I helped a few of them there get across so they didn't get run over. Um, I'll make this short. It'd be nice if they could put a sign there because um, I know there's there's been many, many turtles and lots of migration from the lake uh, down through uh, the Y River there, all through there. A lot of marsh and uh, that I think it's a great idea. And it'd be good if they could put a, a sign there as well, too. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Moore. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Just a, a quick story that last year we had, um, this happens actually right in where I, I live. And uh, last year we had this program come to our property and they recovered about a hundred turtle eggs. They took them back, they hatched them and sent us pictures throughout the summer to give us updates on how the, the turtles were doing. And so I'm, I'm so glad to see this come before council. It's a great program. They do great work and so dedicated, so fully supportive. Thank you. Councillor Hanna. Uh, thank you. And again, I'm supportive as well. Um, uh, anybody that drives down St. Vincent around the curb south of Willow Creek would be aware of the fact there's a big turtle crossing there. The township, I believe it was a township, dumped a load of gravel on the east side of St. Vincent, south of the, uh, the, uh, the river or the bridge for the turtles to uh, nest in and, and put their eggs and so on. My point being is on page three of this report, they, they list um, the streets that they wanna put the signs on. There's already two turtle crossing signs on St. Vincent. One southbound is not in the best place, it's too far north, but it's there. Um, I would suggest that we might want to consider adding St. Vincent to this list of streets that they have here in the event they want to come forward in the future and put a sign there, which I think they should have um, put a sign. But if they want to come, it don't have, doesn't have to come back before council. If we add St. Vincent here, it's done and uh, it may happen in the future. So you're proposing to amend it to add St. Vincent? Yes, please. I, I should have stated that in the beginning. Thank you. Is there a seconder for that amendment? Uh, Councillor Cabral, go ahead, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Thank you, Mayor. Is there an opportunity to have an amendment? I like the idea of having additional signs available because when these do start going out, there might be areas that we may not be aware of. I mean, I do like the idea of this not being an entirely formal process and being able to put the signs that I know that Wilson Road is another one that often has that. So if we could purchase some extra signs so that they just are available when places like this are identified, that would, I think, would be great. Manager Dean uh, or um, uh, Director Radigan uh, from the financial perspective, but starting with Manager Dean. <clears throat> 
Yes, thank you, Mayor Allen. So this report before you tonight does not have any financial implications because it would be funded through the START program. Um, I can reach out to START and see if they would have additional funding for any signage in other locations. So they're currently working with MVCA and in the menacing wetland areas. Um, additionally, if we were looking as a, at a township as putting up additional signs, um, don't quote me on this number, but I believe for sign post and sign, it would be probably approximately $80 or so a sign if we did want to look at um, doing that through additional funds. Um, off the top of my head, I don't necessarily want to commit to that exact funding tonight, but I, I can get back to Council on where that funding source could come from. Okay, Councillor Hanna, does that uh, address it satisfactorily? Yes, thank you. And, and uh, based on what the Deputy Mayor has said, possibly there's a, a, a consideration for an amendment to say that uh, we consider putting signs where there's any identified need and that way it doesn't have to come back to council to get a list of, of roads that are not on this list. Rick Ainsworth. Can you uh, go ahead and read the motion uh, then once you have the wording? Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Yes, it'll just be one moment. My apologies. Um, please let me know if you'd like any changes to this amendment. That the motion now before council be approved, uh, be amended as follows. That staff be directed to request additional signage locations, including St. Vincent, where there is an identified need. And that a subsequent report be provided to council to identify cost implications and a funding source should additional signage not be provided by the START project. Okay. To cover it. Okay, uh, so we have a mover and seconder for that. And uh, so we'll go ahead and vote on the amendment. All those in favor? That is carried. And then uh, the main motion and including the amendment, uh, mover and seconder. Councillor Moore, Councillor Hanna. Uh, I don't think I need to read it. All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Moving on to information reports, 8.1. Um, mover and seconder, please, for that. Councillor Moore, Councillor Ma Chapman, any questions of the bylaw services monthly activity report for March 2022? That the, this be received as information. All those in favor? That is carried. Verbal reports. Director Spagnell, official plan update or economic uh, development update, please. Thank you, Marilyn. I do not have anything new to update uh, Council about anything right now. Thank you. Okay. 9.3 uh, Midhurst development update to General Manager Ramdale. Good evening, Mayor Allen, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, members of Council. Um, this evening, I shall begin with the new homes. Uh, the developer has actually started construction on 10 of the homes, beginning with the foundations, and that was as of this afternoon. CB over Stratton did advise me that we've issued 25 building permits to date. Um, all other aspects are similar to last week's or last council's report. The developer is working on the effluent main along Highway 26 and will be on Wilson in May. Uh, since last council uh, meeting, there have been no additional complaints on his work. Um, on the water wastewater plant, the interim plant works are proceeding as per schedule, and they've actually started the design work for the future ultimate water wastewater plant as well. At the roundabout, the future roundabout intersection at Wilson Carson Seeden, the county continues to prepare the site and is working on relocating the hydro poles and wires. And that brings me to the end of the update for this evening. Any questions? 
Okay, uh, moving on to uh, county updates, Stephanie Mayor Coughlin. Maryland Dome County update. Okay, moving on to municipal updates, any municipal updates? Councilor Ritchie. Alan, I just want to mention to everybody and anybody listening tonight, this is April, and before you know it, it'll be over with. Uh, maple syrup season's in uh, full gear, and despite all the uh, poor weather we've had, uh, I know there's one producer up here, Mr. Lalon, and there might be a few others. If you get a chance, get out, get some of this stuff. It's uh, it's magic, uh, magic, good, it's good stuff for you. So. I recommend everybody get out and get some maple syrup. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mott Chapman. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Just a couple of things. Ant Mills had their Easter egg extravagance on Saturday, and uh, it was a good turnout, and the weather was was uh, cooperative, which is great. Nice to see that after COVID. And also uh, the Menacing Church, as I said the last time, um, it closed as of Sunday, Easter Sunday. They had their last... Um, church um, ceremony and they are having a grad sale there um, tomorrow and Friday from 3 to 7 and Saturday from 9 to 12 if anyone is interested. Thank you. Uh, Manager Dean, can you give us an update on the spring water swing please? Thank you, Marilyn, and through yourself to council. So the spring water swing tournament uh, will be restarting this year after um, a two year break um, due to the restrictions in place the last two years. So this will be our 14th annual spring water swing tournament held at the Barry uh, Golf Club this year. And it will be held on Monday, June the 13th with a shotgun start. So we have um, started the promotions for the tournament and there has been um, uh, individualized letters sent out to past sponsors and past foursomes as well, um, reaching out for their continued support and participation participation in the tournament again this season. So we have currently sold out of the title sponsorship, the lunch sponsorship, and the dinner sponsorship for this season. Um, we do have some of our returning sponsors for whole sponsors, uh, gold and silver letter, gold and silver letters level sponsorships as well and we are starting to bring in foursomes so uh currently we do still have uh, lots of availability for foursomes and whole sponsorships and we will be sending out a reminder uh email and just retouching base with uh some of the past participants um at the end of this week and there is social media around it and it has gone out in the spring water link as well thank you any other municipal updates Okay, moving on to 10.1, uh, notice of motion. Uh, Councillor Ritchie's 10.1, notice of motion pertaining to 2021-2022 ditching. Is there a seconder for this, please? Uh, Councillor Cabral, Councillor Ritchie. Mayor Allen, um, just, just to a bit of history here, I, I forwarded the notice of motion and then uh, Mahesh, was so kind to send me some information on a map of, of where they've ditched and what they've done. And so what I'd like to do, I'm, I'm prepared to pull this motion, but I would like to put this on the next uh, council meeting agenda as a line item, because I have some concerns or some questions and I know I'm pretty sure some other council members have some questions as well too. That we would like to be able to uh, direct to uh, the manager of public works. So um, I'm quite happy to just put this onto the next council meeting uh, agenda line item. And uh, I don't know if it's up to the clerk or whoever. Yep. Okay. I need, I need some direction there, please. Yes, Clerk Ainsworth. Uh, thank you, Mary Allen. Through you to Councillor Ritchie. I would recommend still moving forward with your uh, notice of motion this evening, because then that would direct staff to come forward with a report at the next meeting, uh, where you can then have that that conversation. So, uh, okay. So, do we? I'm sorry, Mary Allen. Through you. To, so, do we vote on it tonight? Uh, yes. Would you adjust the wording at all, uh, Clerk Ainsworth?
um, through you, Mayor Allen. Uh, Go ahead. Well, I guess we could leave it as it is. Uh, General Manager yeah. Rondeo has provided information. And if there were further questions, by any council members, they could get to general manager Ramdeo yeah. with respect to those questions and that could be incorporated into the report. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's nodding. Okay, so we see the motion there. It's moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That is carried. Mayor, Mayor Allen, may I speak? Yes, go ahead, Councillor Richard. Um, Mayor Allen, before we get into these other notices of motions, I had another notice of motion that I was uh, I was late getting it in. So I'm asking permission to read it now and then it's done and then we can move forward or um, I need your blessing on this or what should I do? Oh, one second. Clerk Ainsworth, uh, procedurally, should we deal with these other notices of motion and then and uh, when I ask if there are any other notices of motion, Councillor Ritchie can come forward with that. Uh, yes, thank you through you, Mayor Allen. That would be generally the, the process that we follow during the meeting. Okay, that's okay. fine. Yeah, that's thank good. You. At least I know, thank you. Uh, okay, 10.2 is the notice of motion with respect to the township green belt buffer uh, moved by Councillor Moore uh, as her seconder for this. Councillor Ma Chapman, uh, Councillor Moore. Thank you very much, Mayor Allen. Um, I'll go through the, the motion first, or the recommendation, sorry. Uh, whereas Springwater Township has maintained a one kilometer green belt buffer around its perimeter since pre-1998 and pre-Springwater Township consisting of a physical boundary which restricts new non-agricultural uses from being located within, and whereas in 2015, Council passed a motion to maintain the current policy direction with respect to the Springwater Greenbelt buffer in order to protect agricultural farmland by restricting new non-agricultural development with the exception of minor site-specific infill applications. And whereas Springwater Township Council has been asked to consider an industrial development within the township's Greenbelt buffer, be it resolved that Council reaffirm the commitment to maintaining the township's current Greenbelt buffer but may consider any major institutional development applications to address a social need to the community. And when I refer to a social need to the community, I'm, I'm speaking to um, a hospital, a long-term care home, a retirement home, possibly a school. Um, what I'd like to do now is read to you the motion or the recommendation that was passed in 2015 which was moved by Hannah, seconded by McConkie. That the report from the manager of planning regarding township green belt policy review direction report dated April 7, 2015 be received. That council resolves to maintain the current policy direction with respect to the spring water green belt buffer in order to protect agricultural farmland by restricting new non-agricultural development with the exception of minor site specific infill applications. And so at this point, I would like to, if I may, uh, direct to uh, Director Spagnall, if you wouldn't mind giving council a brief history of that decision and what was uh, previous to that 2015 recommendation. Thank you, Director Spagnall. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I will do my best to uh to give a Coles Nose version of approximately 10 years worth of, uh, of consideration of, of Greenbelt policy review. Um, essentially, the, the Greenbelt has been the focus of considerable development pressure since I've been in the township and, and for as long as, as I can remember. And, and as far as any of the, the past documentation, uh, since, since Vesper days where, where there was quite a bit of pressure for development to occur along the, the Vesper boundary and the city of Barrie boundary, municipal boundaries. Essentially what, what occurred was there was direction from council in 2012 for staff to conduct a green belt review, to take a look at the policy review and take a look at any potential opportunities to take a look at any of key areas uh, within the green belt to see if there was any ability to provide for some form of policy guidance. 
This direction was based on the amount of pressure that was being placed on Springwater Council at that time and the number of inquiries from property owners along the city of Barrie boundary and the township of Springwater boundary, municipal boundary for development to occur. So essentially what happened was Springwater retained the services of Planscape, who is a, a planning firm um, that was uh, essentially tasked with uh, the review of the Greenbelt policies and specifically key some key nodes within the Greenbelt. One of them being the Bayfield Street corridor, another one being um, any of the corridor along County 90, County Road 90, also looking at the, um, the interface between Wasaga Beach and Springwater, more or less up around County Road 92, and also along uh, St. Vincent um, and Hanmer Street, which was also another node where there was some pressure for, uh, for development to occur in the Greenbelt. As a result of that study, um, Council uh, resolved to direct staff to contact the City of Barrie to discuss whether or not there would be any appetite for the city of Barrie to consider any cross-border servicing um, type considerations. That occurred over the course of roughly two years and the city of Barrie uh, resolved and, and provided a resolution of council that, that the city would be receptive to consideration of some form of, of servicing scenario within the Greenbelt. However, there were a couple of parameters that the city of Barrie wanted to be included or, or conditions. One of them was essentially that if the city was to provide services, cross-border services for a use within the green belt, that that use should not compete with any of the strategic directions of the city. And then also that there would have to be some form of a funding arrangement to compensate for the provision of services across municipal, municipal boundaries. So essentially there was about a year or so um, prior to the completion of, of the study in, in 2013 by Planscape. And um, with as far as discussions go with the city of Barrie and city staff for when that resolution came forward, it was in 2015 when staff came forward with a report seeking direction from council as to how to proceed with respect to the Greenbelt policies. And there were a number of options that, that contemplated staff going through the process of revising policy and initiating an official plan amendment to provide guidance in the Greenbelt, um, which would have incurred costs associated with additional cons uh, consulting fees and as such, and essentially in 2015, council resolved to, um, to consider a development within the Greenbelt on a case-by-case -case basis, but to generally maintain the Greenbelt buffer with the exception of minor infill as what was stated by Councillor Moore. And that essentially from the perspective of I would say existing resolutions of council with respect to the green belt is really what has been captured and what has been maintained in the official plan work that's been completed to date. Now, in saying that there are additional resolutions that have come forward with respect to individual proposals within the green belt, but the 2015 resolution is really the last resolution that council provided direction to staff um, with respect to guiding um, guiding direction within the Greenbelt policy area. In a nutshell, that's uh, that's 10 years worth of history, Mayor Allen. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hanna, so follow up first, Councillor Moore. <clears throat> oh, thank you. And thank you, Director Spagnol, for that. Uh, so the question I'm posing tonight is, you know, at what point do we reaffirm that recommendation? So it was 2015, this is 2022, seven years later. Do we reaffirm that today? Um, and I think it's a good time to, and, or do we, do we not? Do we decide that, that we now develop it? So that's the question. Director Spagno, what, what is, what historically has been the purpose of the green belt, the green belt buffer? Uh, you, you, you've heard talk about preventing the potential of annexation 
protecting agricultural farmland. What, what is your understanding of the purpose of having the green belt buffer? Thank you, Marilyn. The, the, the general purpose originally was to uh, prevent the annexation, uh, further annexation of lands um, as a result of, of the city of Barrie essentially taking over development that occurred close to those municipal boundaries. But in addition to that, the, the green belt provides a, a clear separation and a buffer between urban and agricultural lands within the township. So there, there's two, two key purposes associated with the green belt. One may not be as applicable as the other, but, but those are the initial two purposes of, of, of why the green belt was established. And, and, I and I think to answer uh, Councillor Moore's question uh, with respect to the timing of, of consideration of a resolution, whether or not to uphold the policy, the, the township is conducting an official plan review where the, the topic of the green belt has also come up. Um, in the discussion paper um, that was received by council, um, it does essentially you know, look to maintain the green belt policy and the directions contained within. Um, so it's really up to council to determine whether or not council wants to have that discussion through the official plan review and deal with that on a more a comprehensive basis through that process, or whether or not council wants to resolve to, to, um, to follow through with a position today. And, and dealing with it through the, I'll get you in a sec, Councillor Hannah. Dealing with it through an official plan, the official plan process, the timing of that would be what? Well, uh, Mayor Allen staff was hoping to bring um, a, a draft official plan for consideration and adoption sometime in June. However, we're not sure we're going to be able to hit that time frame. Um, so it would be definitely beyond June, I would have to say at this point. Okay, Councillor Hanna. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, and I think everybody has to agree that spring water is a pretty special place. And I think one of the reasons it makes it special is that we're uh, independent, if you like, and we're separated from the, the urban um, south of us anyway. And, and further to um, Director Spagnol's uh, comments, uh, I was part of all the discussions going back to 2011, 12, 13, and 15. Um, and my understanding is quite clear as to what we finally resolved and it was the areas as mentioned by uh, the director. But I believe it's important that we do reaffirm the commitment. I would not want the legacy of this council to be that we uh, opened up the, and destroyed the green belt and, and um, ruined the agriculture. And that's prime agriculture land, by the way, that uh, currently exists there. And I, I would ask uh, Councilor Moore to uh, consider a friendly amendment I would like to add to her uh, motion. And that is at the end of the second paragraph, after and where it says in 2015 council passed a motion to maintain the current policy direction with respect to spring water green belt buffer in order to protect agriculture farmland by restricting new non-agricultural development with exception of minor site specific infill applications and what i would like to add is that and any major commercial development that would benefit spring water township in the corridors of highways 90 93 26 and 27 highway Bayfield Street. Um, let me just, uh, I'm just reading that again. To protect it from. I'm sorry, did you ask me to read that again? Uh, yes, please, Councillor Hannah. I, I'd be happy to, thank you. Um, and any major commercial development that would benefit Springwater Township in the corridors of highways 90, 93, 2627 Highway Bayfield Street. My point being is that those are commercial development areas that I think where the buffer exists in those areas and commercial development applications come forward, we should give them a strong consideration. Um, okay, so that's a friendly amendment. Uh, Clerk Ainsworth. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, just a comment on the placement of the friendly amendment, should Councillor Moore um, be okay with it. Uh, the second paragraph speaks to the motion from 2015. So I would recommend that the that Councillor Hannah's um, wording 
um, again, should Councillor Moore agree, be added to the end of the last paragraph um, versus the paragraph about the motion from 2015. <coughs> Can I go ahead? Councilor Hanna. Oh, thank you. I would definitely acquiesce to the experience and recommendation of Clark Ainsworth. Um, uh, uh, Councilor Moore. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Through you to Director Spagnell, I just have a quick question. And when I was looking through the reports, and I, I don't expect you to have, you know, a perfect memory that does go back a ways, but was there some policy um, or recommendation around those intersections that Councillor Hannah is speaking to. Um, I'm wondering about the, the report. There was considerations made for, for that geography. Director Spagnell. I'm thinking right on through to, to Councillor Moore. There, there were considerations where, where there was the identification of possible opportunities for commercial development along those corridors. However, with respect to the planscape report that was completed, one of the key considerations was whether or not those uses should be directed more to the in-place settlement areas versus along that corridor. And that was really a consideration that was outlined within the report. Um, the, the report from my recollection outlined a number of different things that had to occur in order to allow for those types of uses. So you know, even even though they are along the corridor, there would still be the requirement for official plan amendments, zoning bylaw amendments, and the required studies. But from my recollection, that was one of the key points that came out from that planscape report, which essentially was was indicating that before council would go down that road, the those types of uses, commercial uses, should be considered and it should be directed towards the settlement areas where you have servicing and land available for for to support those uses. So Councillor Moore. Oh I was I was going to ask uh Councillor Hanna if um he would consider if the official plan is being reviewed presently, would you be agreeable to having Director Spagnell include that in, in the considerations for the official plan review that's underway right now? Councillor Hanna. Uh, thank you. I, I believe it's important that it should be in this uh, motion. It can also be, come up again in the future. And why I believe it's important, what I read is what was agreed to by the council of the day. And I believe that was 2013. And I, I can recall who, the, who uh, seconded the motion and, and that was uh, the deputy mayor of the day. So the council of the day, even though Planscape came forward with a, a report, the council of the day, um, suggested that we would consider any major commercial developments in those corridors that would benefit Springwater Township. And I, I just believe because that's what was approved by the council. Um, obviously, if something comes forward in the future, there'll be an amendments made, but I believe it's important that that should be included in the, the um, motion. And that's why I, I believe the clerk is correct. Maybe it would be better at your last paragraph, uh, Council Moore, if you agree to the friendly amendment. Yes, that's fine. It's fine. But Councillor, uh, but uh, Director Spagnell, um, didn't you say, and when you're recounting the history that, uh, including what Councillor uh, Hannah's referring to, that it was, it was uh, exceptions were, would be considered on a case by case basis rather than the specifics of naming the Bayfield Corridor? Director Spagnell? Thank you, Marilyn. The recollection of, of, of the discussions revolved around the green boat was really that anybody who was going to come in or any proponent that was going to have to, that was going to apply to do something in the green boat would still have to come in and apply under the same planning process, you know, like I said, with official plan amendments, plans of subdivision, zoning. So essentially they would be considered on a case by case basis. Um, you know, through the considering, you know, through the, the, the planning act process, ultimately, you know, council can make decisions through that process um, while keeping in mind the resolution that was passed in 2015. So, you know, when I say a case by case basis, I mean, applications are considered 
based on their merits and their ability to go and satisfy the policies of the day. So if there were to be applications, council would be required to, to form a position based on the merits of each individual application. Yep, okay. Um, let me get to Deputy Mayor Coughlin. She said her card up and then I'll get back to you, uh, Councillor Hannah, go ahead. No, thank you, Marilyn. Um, and thank you, Councillor Moore, for bringing this forward. Is there an opportunity aside from the OP review to have this as a workshop or to have this as a special meeting of council? There is decades of history that have gone into decisions that have been made. And I think that this deserves diligence. I think that um, affirming uh, a motion from 2015, I think that we need to look at the entire, the entire picture. I think that we need to look at the entire mapping. And if there is amendments that are gonna be made to dictate what type of facility can and, and cannot, whether it's uh, a social benefit or a commercial, I think that those deserve our, our full attention. So I would like to see this referred not to part of the OP. I don't want it to get swallowed up in that. I think that it deserves its own time for us to really sit down and, and have an opportunity to go through the reports and, and to make a decision as to where we want to move forward. Uh, Director Spagnol, any response to that? <clears throat> Uh, Marilyn, I, th I think really staff is in council's hands with respect to this. Um, you know, similar to 2012, there's still immense pressure within the green belt. And, you know, there, if there needs to be a, a more focused consideration outside of the official plan review, uh, staff can definitely provide an information report to outline some of the, the key parameters to, to go over that and to provide that information to council ahead of, of considering uh, some form of a resolution. I, I would add though that, that from a comprehensive perspective, the official plan review does provide that opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the day, if it's, if it's a matter of council needing additional information to consider the motions that are, are, are before council tonight, I mean, the staff is in, in council's hands to provide additional information on, on the matter. Okay, um, who hasn't had a chance to speak yet on this? Okay, I'll go back to uh, Councillor Cabral. Thank you. Um, I, I, uh, I support this and the reason I support this is it, it's gonna be putting it off. It's gonna reopen uh, some things. And my understanding is that the uh, locations <coughs> indicated by <coughs> Councillor Hannah uh, were locations that were specific to uh, prior uh, prior um, planning. So um, I, I think we should move forward with it. Okay, Councillor Ma Chapman. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, just listening to everyone tonight, um, I think I still need um, maybe a clearer picture of really what the green belt buffer really does, because I know um, with the annex with Barry, but Barry has built right up to the annex, I believe, with, I mean, with the green buffer, green belt buffer, right, with residential homes. So my, my, I'm having a hard time and wondering, I know why we aren't doing it, because we have that policy, but maybe we need to look at, uh, consider looking at the policy, because we've changed and we're growing um, fast and furious. So I would like to see Maybe a report, um, like Councilor or Deputy Mayor Coughlin and Director Spragel said, just to give me more information on really what does this do. I know it protects the agricultural, but and farmland. But with us growing, I just want to make sure that we are with, with the times. Okay, Councilor Anna. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And the the purpose of my addition is to add it on is that. If somebody comes forward with something they had in the past, like the end of life facility, we would at least consider it. I'm not suggesting that by putting my addition on to Councillor Moore's uh, motion would be an automatic approval of anything. And like the director Spagnol says, they'd still have to go through all the official plans and everything. But the purpose of my motion is the same as it was back in 2013 and 2015 was that if something that would benefit the residents of Springwater Township came forward, in the buffer zones on 90, 93, and Bayfield Street, we would consider them. Not to say we'd give it automatic approval. That would still have to be go through all the planning stuff as, is, as has been pointed out. But I think by not putting my uh, motion or adding my comments to the motion, 
would would not be sending a motion or, or a message forward that we would at least consider things. And that's what I think is important that if developers come forward with something that we think is outstanding, we'd consider it. But uh, Councillor Hanna, wouldn't your example uh, uh, of the end of life uh, facility be encompassed in the last sentence of the existing motion, but may consider any major institutional development applications to address social need to the community? I, I think that the, the, what to, how I read that is that's anywhere in the buffer zone and I'm trying to suggest we should be more specific and at least protect the buffer zone where we can, but at least consider things that would benefit the residents of Springwater in those areas that I mentioned in those corridors. So basically, aren't you sort of picking and choosing what areas in the buffer zone that you'd like to potentially see development? Uh, absolutely, I, I absolutely, Mayor Allen. I, I think that it's important for this council to maintain the, the buffer zone as long as we possibly can. That was what previous councils and, and representatives of the residents of Springwater thought was necessary. And I think the annexation uh, would be, in my mind, a very difficult thing for Springwater Township if it was to occur. Uh, the tax dollars in the south that would be lost to the, the north of the, the Springwater Township, I think it would be devastating. And I really believe we as a council don't want to have our, our legacy, as I mentioned, that we opened up the, the green belt and eventually were the cause of annexation that I believe it would be uh, admirable for, or uh, desirable, uh, if you like, for the city of Barrie, given all the development that's going forward in the south part of the township, especially the, the recreational stuff that we're planning on building and so on. So I really believe that we need to protect Springwater residents and the best way to do that is keep that buffer zone in place as long as possible. Okay, Deputy Mayor Calden and Councilor Moore. Uh, thank you, Marilyn. And again, my, my comments were just that I, I would like to see this moved to um, a more in-depth conversation because I think that when we start adding different sites, it, it changes the motion and it changes the intent of it. And it's not suggesting that I don't support that, but to me, like how how long along Highway 93 and all 93 and if there if the if the 2015 resolution says that all site specific uh, requests will be handled by council, why are we adding anything? Because all site specific will be requested. And if this is if this is our opportunity to ask questions tonight, I do have a list of questions for Director Spagnell because I, I again don't need minor site specific infill applications. What are the parameters surrounding that? What does that implement? They're, like there, this is a huge topic and one that I think that this council should dive into. We should absolutely give it the diligence it requires. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Uh, I wanted to ask Councillor Hanna, if he was by saying commercial development, what did you mean by commercial? When I think commercial, I think of a shopping mall. So I just, if you could just clarify that for me. Uh, and thank you. And yes, I, I would suggest anything that's not residential in my mind, whether it's um, medical, uh, if it's a, a major con convention center that one resident wanted to build, I think anything, as I mentioned, that would be advantageous or, or profitable to the residents of Springwater. Certainly, um, I'm just not suggesting it should be residential. I'd hate to see prime commercial property or opportunity for commercial property uh, filled up with, uh, with houses that could be placed in other locations. Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Uh, thank you, Marilyn. And again, in agreement with Councillor Hanna's comments and this being brought forward by Councillor Moore, I would like to propose a referral to staff to have this have, allow, allow members of council who didn't sit um, on that time the opportunity to really dive into this to ensure that when we are doing the mapping and when we do reaffirm this council's position, it's one that's done with diligence. Okay, Councillor Cabral. Mayor Allen, I don't, I don't see what the problem is. The motion's on the floor. I would call for the vote, please. We're just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, getting worn down again. So I would ask that the, the motion uh, a vote be called. Well, uh, I'm, I'm making sure that we have uh, discussion uh, of all of us, Councillor Cabral. So uh, 
Um, I want to make sure that that is fulsome. And uh, I'm about to say something myself too, after having given other councillors a chance to speak. Um, Councillor Hanna. Uh, thank you, Mary. And this will be my last comment because like Councillor Cabell says, we need to get move on. But um, the reason we're doing this and having this discussion is because the developer came forward that wanted to build uh, an industrial park in our buffer zone. And there's a couple of members of council that appear to be supportive of that. And I, I think it's clear to the residents of Spring Water that we need to protect that buffer zone. And as their advocate, I'm trying to do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that didn't end up coming forward and we didn't end up having the discussion around it. So uh, um, you know, what you think the opinions or actions of other council members really uh, didn't get a chance to play out. So uh, uh, you have an opinion with respect to that, but it, it, it didn't come to fruition to be able to see what the actual opinions were. Did you want to make a point, Clerk Ainsworth? Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. I just wanted to comment on the request for calling of the vote. Uh, there has also been a request for a referral, so that would need to be a, a seconder sought and then dealt with a, if a seconder is, a, is um, identified. Uh, point, point of order, Clerk Ainsworth, would you please clarify? We already have uh, an amendment on the floor and a motion on the floor. How can there's we? A fr there's a friendly amendment. Uh, oh. It's a friendly amendment. It's not a full fledged amendment um, to, the, to the initial motion. Um, Councillor Ritchie, you had your hand up. Mayor Allen, I, I just want to, I don't, I, I don't want to kind of stir things up anymore here, but, um, and I'm gonna ask uh, Director Spagnum here maybe to jump in and, and correct me, but if we were to move forward and, 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 and vote on this motion and get it passed, uh, it, at least it gives us something in the meantime until staff does come back whenever with another report and then we can address it, uh, we can address this motion at that time and uh, and go from there because uh, let's face it, like the whole South End is moving forward at a great pace. Um, um, I can see sewer lines within the next few years going up Bayfield Street, and we're not going to have to worry about uh, sharing services with the city of Barrie. We we should be able to do this, and I'm talking of the corridor Bayfield Street 26, 27, right to the top of the hill, and. Uh, and it's going to be going up Carson Road. It can go up that hill and and uh, and and deal with those areas, that area there. And uh, but anyways, I, can can we not move forward and, and vote on this and then come back and, and address it at a, at a later date with more with more information? That's my question, Brad. I guess rephrasing that, if if this motion is voted upon and passes tonight. What is the impact of that on the official plan review, Director Spagel? Uh, thank you, Marilyn. Uh, the well, there's a couple of things that would that would that would possibly result in, from this. Um, township staff would would most likely have to revisit. Uh, I would say the the work that's being completed to date, and just. You know, just just thinking ahead as to as to the direction of council, revisit those policies to see if those policies fit within the direction that council has provided today. And then, essentially, through the official plan review, council would have to um, land on a position once council sees the policies with respect to the green belt. So, in essence. I would have to say that the you know the, the motion that 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 council brings forward tonight and possibly uh, considers and 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 resolves to approve would have an impact on the official plan review process because it, it gives staff food for thought as we're looking at drafting policy to to provide policy guidance within the green belt. Follow on, Councillor Ritchie. Yes, Mayor Allen. If, if anything, um, I think it would give staff some direction. As to what our thoughts are on the matter here, and uh, give some direction as to what we're thinking, and also to the rest of the public about protecting the rest of the buffer, uh, the buffer zone as well. So uh, I I don't see any reason why we could move forward with this motion 
and uh, we can always go back and deal with it at another time, but at least it gives staff some direction as to what we're thinking. Thank you. Councillor Moore. Um, thank you, Mayor Allen. And I agree. I think we can move ahead with the motion this evening. I will agree to Councillor Hanna's friendly amendment if the clerk could work on that wording. And um, like Director Spagnell said, we will have to revisit this or we have the option to revisit this um, at the official plan process. So I say we move ahead. Well, my feeling is, is uh, that I can't support it the way it is now. I think we've, as, as has been mentioned, there have been some, uh, there, there are some new councillors and, uh, and some that have had history with respect to this. I would like to see this be part of the official plan review. I don't think there's any pressing need to um, make a decision and really cast uh, uh, the majority of council's opinion with respect to this uh, pre the official plan review. So uh, I certainly want to deal with it and, and, and come upon consensus council with respect to it. But I think we're dealing with it piecemeal now rather than through the official plan process. Who we'll just had their card up, uh, Deputy Mayor Coughlin? Uh, thank you, Marilyn. And if there is no before the referral is, is on, then is there an opportunity to, to a minor site specific infill application? Also, mapping how far up Highway 93, like it just says Highway 93, it says Bayfield Street Court. Like that to me, if I'm voting on that to be uh, separate or considered in a different way than the rest of the buffer zone, I need to know exactly what I'm voting on. That's a point. Councillor Cabral. Thank you. Uh, this is not something new. You know, this has already been there. And those uh, spots that uh, Councillor Hannah identified were part and partial to it. Basically, we're just reaffirming the position on it. And once again, I would say, uh, I think we should just have the vote. If some councillors don't support it, then so be it. Yep. Okay, so uh councillor Ma chapman thank you mary allen and maybe um my fault for not going back to 2015 and reading that um green buffer policy and i should have reread it before today but that's what i don't understand really what what the green buffer does and what it should do with our growing population so that's why i'm i'm hesitating and i'm not that i don't disagree with the motion but I just don't have enough information. Okay, Clerk Ainsworth, um, can you, uh, oh, a, a point I wanted to make, are we um, doing, if we're doing friendly amendments to the motion, uh, the third paragraph no longer is applicable because the industrial development uh, did not, uh, was was uh, pulled that delegation. So we did not continue with that. So, uh, would that be removed from the proposed motion, Councilor Moore? Um, it's there because it was the impetus to why I brought the motion forward. I'm not sure, it doesn't identify anybody or anything. Why would we have to pull that? Uh, uh, excuse me, Mayor Allen, um, that is in the next motion. I don't believe it's in the motion oh, we're sorry. speaking right now. Uh, no, it's, I'm talking about the third paragraph of this motion. Right, I see it, where you're considering at the industrial development that yeah. is truly why I brought the motion forward. I wouldn't have brought well, it forward I, otherwise. I understand it might be the reason you brought it forward, but I don't see the purpose of it being in the, mo in, in the motion when it didn't continue to be discussed or decided upon or presented. It's fine. It's not a big deal. We can take it out. Okay. Um, Councilor Cabral. Mayor Allen, I, I would ask that Councilor Moore reconsider that. The reason that we're here talking about this is because of that, and it has been on the agenda. As a matter of fact, the proponents have pulled it several times. I think it needs to stay in there. If I not, uh, we're just opening it up again. Well, the mover. I just the mover was willing to pull it, Councillor Cabral. So uh, well, I'm, okay, so I'm just suggesting just... she might like to reconsider. That's all. Well, I'll ask. I'll ask Director Spagnell. Actually, what is? If it says an industrial development 
um, had interest in the green buffer versus uh, an institutional development versus a commercial development, what does it what does it really matter if that's in there? Anything? Director Spagnol. I think Mayor Allen through you to, to Councillor Moore, it really comes down to the consideration of what council feels might be appropriate to locate in the uh, in the buffer. Um, recognizing that that the direction of the policy really, when you read it, is is to restrict new non-agricultural uses. So that determination as to what council would feel is appropriate is really left to council to determine and, and, and really rule on. It really wouldn't be up to staff to say whether or not there is, uh, um, you know, whether there's an issue with one over the other. The policy is the policy and, and really it's meant to, to maintain those, those agricultural lands and, and, and it restricts new non-agricultural development, which would include the uses that are being considered tonight by council. That's right, that's right. Thank you very much, Director Spagnol. I'm fine with it being removed. Actually, the fourth paragraph clearly states that we would consider any major institutional development or application to address a social need and that includes Councillor Hanna's particulars and his intersections. And I think that's pretty clear. Okay, um, Clerk Ainsworth, can you read uh, what's being added uh, per Councillor Hanna's uh, request at the end of this? Uh, thank you. And it would read, um, so it would be tacked on to the last paragraph. Um, and any major commercial development that would benefit Springwater Township in the corridors of 90, 93, 26, 27, and Bayfield Street. And I did want to check to make sure I captured uh, those areas correctly, Councillor Hannah. Yes, thank you. Okay. Call a recorded vote too, please. Yeah. Okay. Proceed then, uh, Clerk Ainsworth. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. There is still also uh, the potential referral by Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Uh, a seconder was never sought, but that was still uh, a request that's outstanding on the table. And was that was that in the form of a, an amendment? Uh, through you, Mayor Allen, it would be a separate motion. Um, that I've drafted in the event that it's, it does move forward, that the motion now before council be referred to a special meeting of council to receive further information regarding the green belt buffer and review previous reports and decisions of council relating to the green belt buffer. Okay, I will second that. Recorded vote, please. Right. I have a question for the clerk, Mayor. I don't know if the, you as the chair are allowed to second a motion, but maybe you are, but I don't believe you are. Clerk Ainsworth. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Yes, you would uh, need to pass the chair to second the motion. And with Deputy Mayor Coughlin moving the motion, it would uh, need to be another member of council. Councillor Mott Chapman, you had your card up. Oh, I was going to second if you could. Okay. And Mayor Allen, just to confirm, the seconder is being switched to Councillor Chapman. Yes, thank you. And can you read that motion again, please? That the motion now before council be referred to a special meeting of council to receive further information regarding the green belt buffer and review previous <laughs> reports and decisions of council relating to the green belt buffer. Okay, proceed please. Thank you. And my apologies, uh, could I get confirmation on who requested the recorded vote? Uh, I did, C Councillor Cabral. Thank you. Could you uh, read the motion one more time, please? through the chair um, that the motion now before council be referred to a special meeting of council to receive further information regarding the green belt buffer and review previous reports and decisions of council relating to the green belt buffer.
Go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, when I state your name, please state yes or no. Councillor Cabral? No. Councillor Ritchie? No. Councillor Chapman? Yes. Councillor Moore? No. Councillor Hanna? No. Deputy Mayor Coughlin? Yes. And Mayor Allen? Yes. That vote is lost. Okay, so um, we're then on to this motion at 10.2 with the third paragraph out and with the fourth, with the uh, paragraph that you read with respect to Councillor Hannah's suggestion added at the end. Um, is there any uh, requirement to read this? And there's been a recorded vote requested for this. Go ahead, please, Clerk Ainsworth. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. And again, uh, if I could please seek who uh, Asked for the recorded vote on the main motion. Myself, Clerk Ainsworth, Anita. Thank you. When I state your name, please state yes or no. Councillor Cabral? Yes. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Councillor Chapman? No. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Hanna? Yes. Deputy Mayor Coughlin? No. And Mayor Allen? No. That motion is carried. Okay, um, moving on to 10.3, which is the notice of motion regarding policies guidelines for support requests of NZOs. Again, moved by Councillor Moore. Is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Ritchie, turn it back over to you, Councillor Moore. Thank you very much, Mayor Allen. I will take the time to go through this and read it. It's a bit lengthy, but uh, before I start, I'd like to say that um, in discussion with Councillor Cabral today, um, he has agreed to move some of the pieces of his motion request into, into mine. And that way I can, um, and I'm agreeable to incorporating some of his um, into this reading. Okay. Just a, a matter of process, Clerk Dainsworth, as Councillor Moore proceeds to read a different motion, which is merging or whatever it is, uh, is there anything special we have to do? Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Through you, uh, it would be, as it is Councillor Moore's motion, uh, it would be amendments um, that she is proposing to the motion. She has provided me with the information and they are, um, they don't change the, um, they don't change the outcome of the motion. Uh, it's actually uh, more minor than the friendly amendments that were uh, completed on the, the last motion. So it would be appropriate uh, for Councillor Moore to uh, to provide the differences. And do we first start with a seconder to the amended motion? Uh, Councillor Cabral, go ahead, Councillor Moore. Thank you. Whereas members of council are charged with representing the public and consider the well being and interests of the municipality and to ensure accountability and transparency. And whereas Springwater Township has received a request to, of support for an MZO for an industrial park on agricultural land, whereas typically an applicant seeking to change a zoning bylaw must adhere to the process set out in Section 34 of the Planning Act and OREG 545-06, and whereas no formal policy exists regarding the considerations of MZO requests for support within Springwater Township, and whereas an MZO application on approval by the minister circumvents and bypasses the provincial policy statement guidelines, lower tier official plan and zoning bylaws, upper tier official plan and zoning bylaws to approve development without expert analysis, public input, or any chance of appeal. And whereas there is no formal appeal process once an MZO is approved by the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, and whereas there is no public consultation prior to a support request for an MZO coming forward to Township Council or prior to approval by the Minister. 
And whereas the likelihood of an additional MZO or additional MZO support requests coming forward are very high given the current pressures for opportunities to locate development lands, be it resolved that staff be directed to prepare a report to council to consider policies and guidelines when MZO support requests are brought forward to include MZO request requirements, notification requirements, public consultation requirements. And further that council wishes to enact a two thirds majority vote for any matters before council relating to an MZO request and directs that an amendment to the procedural bylaw be presented at the next regular meeting for consideration. And further that council be educated on specifics like enhanced MZOs, site plan control options, Ministry of Agricultural considerations and contract agreements, revocability, et cetera. And further that said staff report be presented to council for consideration at a regular council meeting prior to July 22. And further that council will suspend any decisions on MZO requests until such a time that a policy is adopted by council. I would ask um, at this time if the clerk would mind putting the slide up on the screen for me that I had shared earlier. This just really outlines for council what an MZO looks like. And I think it's a really important visual to show us that the MZO itself bypasses all bylaws. I mean, the, the township zoning bylaws starting their lower tier official plans, upper tier municipality official plans, single tier municipality official plans, provincial policy statement, right to the planning act. I think it's so important that we see that what we are approving or not approving includes all those steps. Thank you very much, Clerk. You can take it down, it's just for, for that. I was, I was also um, able to locate on the, the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing website at ontario.ca um, information about MZOs. And I wanna to read to you just quickly that the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing stated publicly that he expects that before a city council requests an MZO, they do their due, dilig uh, due diligence, which includes consulting in their communities, engaging with the conservation authority responsible for the lands on which the zoning order is requested, engaging with potentially affected indigenous communities, and such the minister has also publicly stated that he expects a city council request for a zoning order include a supporting council resolution, of course, as council meetings are generally open to the public, this expectation is meant to ensure public awareness of request is being made for the minister to consider. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you. Um, Director Spagno, uh, I'll start with you. Do you have uh, anything you want to add to this or comment? I uh, thank you, Marilyn. <clears throat> I think the first and the first comment is really to to just reiterate to council that from a, a staff perspective and, and from a, a township perspective, understanding that the you know the ministry in the province looks for direction from from council as to whether or not uh, that particular council would be in support of the MZO, that typically these processes don't include a recommendation from staff. Um, I think really, you know, generally speaking, taking a look at um, how the municipality has dealt with uh, processes and approvals that are outside of what I'll call municipal approval. There have been guidelines and things of that nature that have been established for those consideration. Um, but I think it's just important to note that that really in these cases here, it's, uh, it's a provincial consideration, provincial uh, approval. And staff in in probably 99% of these occasions would not be in a position to provide any form of a recommendation on on uh, of support or, or refusal for these types of requests. Okay, um, a follow on Councillor Moore. Thank you. Um, and I understand that too, Director Spagnell. I understand that I I'm not expecting a, a recommendation from the township. What I'm, what I'm asking for is for council to create a standard of, of checks and balances. So when requests come forward, we have um, a process for which the applicant would have to go through, regardless of the fact that they could skip all those steps, they, 
we really need to protect um, ourselves in the township. I think a, a full public consultation for a township wide public consultation is a must. Um, we need to consult our agricultural advisory committees. We need to consult our indigenous community. And um, those, I strongly believe those checks and balances have to be in place before we can consider any MZO. Okay, before I go to Councillor Cabral, can you put the, uh, the uh, amended motion on the screen so that we can review it uh, uh, while we're having discussion, please? Go ahead, Councillor Cabral. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, <clears throat> Um, oh, sharing the screen, sorry. Um, I, uh, I <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> um, MZOs prior to the last few years were far and few between, uh, as few as three, two, four in a year. And uh, they've just uh, started to uh, multiply and multiply. Um, and I know that we had an MZO that came before us uh, with regards to the ELMS. But I think it's really important to uh, delineate the differences there. That particular uh, uh, group had community meetings within Elmvale. Uh, they had community support. Uh, as a matter of fact, I attended some of their meetings as, as well as I think some councillors did. Uh, before they ever approached council, they had actually tried to locate other areas where they could accomplish what they had set out to do, which was to provide senior living for people who live in Elmvale area who wanted to be able to stay with their friends and, and um, <coughs> live independently. And the point I'm trying to make is that particular MZO was beneficial to the community. Um, the whole idea was to have um, the seniors in our own community be able to have this independent living. It wasn't uh, something that just came to council out of the out of the blue. And as a matter of fact, they made several presentations, I think, um, to us uh, with respect to a couple of other locations. Um, <clears throat> the other one that's come up, I'll be quite blunt, it seems to have been taking place in the dark and uh, they were seeking council's approval, uh, basically um, to uh, reward them for doing something that didn't make sense by A1 agricultural land and then try and have it zoned industrial. So <clears throat> I think we do need a process. And with <clears throat> all due respect to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Director Spagnol, uh, I think that what we're seeking is some uh, assistance from the planning department to develop a policy by which we can hold those public consultations as Councillor Moore has said, and um, consult with indigenous people and make sure that uh, uh, an application, if it doesn't meet the criteria that we're even looking for, doesn't come before council. That's what we need to do. So I'm in support uh, of, of the motion as it stands and I don't really have anything else to say about it. Okay, other comments? Deputy Mayor Coughlin? Uh, thank you, Marilyn. So this report would be coming forward from our planning department. Is that correct? Uh, Director Specknell, is that uh, correct? Uh, Mayor Allen, through to, to Deputy Mayor Coughlin, I, I think really it depends. Um, in the past, there have been protocols. So for example, we have cell tower protocols, which are, uh, you know, for approvals are, that are fed under federal, federal jurisdiction. Uh, there are notification requirements that have been brought in forward, um, setbacks, things of that nature that need to be considered uh, for, those types of, uh, for those types of proposals, along with the need for public consultation open houses. So, I mean, planning could prepare a, uh, a protocol for for these types of requests. The the one thing that I think that staff would be looking for would be guidance on specific considerations such as what's an appropriate circulation distance. For example, when we're talking about circulating to the public, um, as mentioned uh, in conversation, 
um, interest groups that would uh, be required to be notified uh, before council would be willing to consider such a request. And that's where that input would be required from council. But uh, planning could, could go through the process of preparing an information report and a draft policy um, and procedure for council's consideration and input. Follow on. Yeah, thank you. And then would there be information pertaining to the an MZO changing to the community infrastructure and housing accelerator? And this is specific to MZOs. So if the province does move forward and scrap MZO and put forward this accelerator that already has the planning, like the public consultation, there's no direction required for that. That would that would be included because to me it's very important if the province is moving forward um, in a different direction. We need that information included. Dr. Spagnell. I think we're out to you to Deputy Mayor Coughlin. I think really, I mean, this is this is a protocol of, of council. So whatever council wants to have included in that protocol can be included because, you know, at the end of the day, it's a proponent that would be seeking support, council support. Um, without diving into the accelerator aspect of things, I couldn't comment it on right now, but that would have to definitely be a consideration within in a report that's prepared by staff just to get uh, better acquainted with what that actually means and entails. Okay, thank you. Um, question, uh, Councilor Moore. In this, as I read it, uh, again, there's reference to, in one of the whereas's, Springwater has received a request of support of MZO for an industrial park on agricultural land. Uh, that, uh, to me, as we removed in the last motion, um, I would suggest that that should be removed, that particular whereas, because it didn't go forward. Uh, and then I noticed that this is requesting a staff to prepare a report to council, and yet underneath that, it says further that council wishes to enact a two-thirds majority vote for any matters before council related to MZO requests. So that's not part of this staff report, looking at that and potentially proposing that or not as part of the report, it's going ahead and approving that as part of this motion tonight. Is that correct, Council Moore? Uh, to you, Mayor Allen, with the second sentence, our where it speaks to the industrial park on agricultural land. Again, that was the impetus for bringing the motion forward. And if, um, if it seems irrelevant now, that's fine. We can remove that. And I would ask that Councillor Cabral speak to um, the two third majority vote and then Clerk Ainsworth to clarify if that can stay or not stay or should be a separate vote. Councillor Cabral. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, uh, as, uh, as I recollect, and you may recollect as, as well, when they brought in the code of conduct, our code of conduct bylaw <clears throat> uh, actually had in there a two thirds vote being required. Um, so um, I think uh, it might be, uh, it might be, uh, not it might be, it should be contained here. And if it means um, strictly for the MZOs, <laughs> it'd be two thirds of council. I think that, um, basically uh, bears well for the residents of Springwater Township. I'm sure everybody, we voted 100% for the Elms. You know, <coughs> we saw what they'd done and we voted uh, <coughs> to support them. <coughs> However, um, uh, I, 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 I don't think that would be the case in every MZO. And to my way of thinking, it's the nuclear option. And I think that it should be something that is done that basically overrides everything that we have and we would be relegated to being bystanders that it should be two thirds of the vote. And I believe it says that uh, uh, something be <coughs> presented to council with respect to a wording for uh, that, particular, that particular item. Uh, Clerk Ainsworth. Uh, thank you, Marilyn, through you. Um, so anytime council would like to have anything other than just a simple majority vote, 
uh, it has to be outlined in within the procedure bylaw. Um, so one example is um, reconsiderations. Some municipalities uh, require a two thirds vote for any reconsideration. So any type of topic can have that label of a two thirds uh, majority vote requirement um, if the procedure bylaw outlines so. So procedurally, there would be nothing wrong with council um, requiring this and including it in this motion, it would be up to the will of council. Um, and should the motion pass as is with that sentence in there, I would bring forward an amendment to the procedure bylaw at the next meeting to include a section specific to ministerial zoning orders and that any vote on those matters be uh, require a two thirds majority vote. Can you clarify Councillor Cabral's point about the where else do we require, if at all, a two-thirds vote uh, in Springwater? Uh, based on, through you, Mayor Allen, based on uh, the township's current procedure bylaw, we do not have any requirements for a two-thirds vote um, listed within the procedure bylaw. So it doesn't apply to the Code of Conduct? Previous Code of Conduct, Mayor Allen, not the one we're currently under. The one that Principles of Integrity presented to us? identified a two-thirds vote, excuse me, in there. Quick Ainsworth, can you confirm that? Uh, thank you, Marilyn. No, I would have to look into the matter. Uh, but anything that happens at a meeting of council uh, needs to be, um, it's the procedure bylaw that speaks to that versus the code of conduct. But I, I will look into that matter. And uh, if I need clarification, I will reach out to Councillor Cabral. Councillor Hanna? Uh, thank you, Mary. Just a question. Uh, that uh, sentence that I think you spoke to about the uh, industrial park, I don't know whether Council Moore agreed to leave that in or not, but if it was going to stay in, I was going to suggest we add in there that our official plan identifies the area of 90 uh, highway, 93 highway and 400 as their, our official uh, site for an industrial park. So my question is, is that sentence in or out? I believe Councillor Moore agreed uh, to have it removed. Thank you. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments? Um, let me just see here. Just reading this further. Okay, all right. Um, if there are no other uh, questions, comments, uh, we'll proceed to vote on this. I'd like a recorded vote, please, to Mayor. Okay, Kirk Ainsworth. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, when I state your name, please state yes or no. Councillor Cabral? Yes. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Councillor Chapman? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Hanna? Yes. Deputy Mayor Coughlin? Yes. And Mayor Allen? Yes. That motion is carried. Thank you, Council. Okay, so we're moving on to 10.3 and my understanding, Councillor Cabral, is that this is withdrawn, is that correct? Yes, Mayor Allen, that's correct. I'll withdraw my motion. Thank you. Then are there any other notices of mo motion? Did you have a point, uh, Councillor Mott Chapman, or another notice of motion? Thank you, Mayor Allen. We're um, Councillor Cabral's withdrawing 10.4, correct? 10 point. I see, no, 10.3 I have. I don't think there is a 10.4, is there? 10.3 uh, is Councillor Moore's motion on, on what I'm looking here. Uh, mine is 10.4. Okay, you're right. In my script uh, duplicated. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. But I withdraw it. Yeah. Okay, any other notices of motion, Councillor Ritchie? 
Well, Mayor Allen, I have the one there uh, that's that's on the agenda. Do I bring that up later? Right? No, no. Because I have a, another one I want to mention as well, too. So, okay, well, the first one, the first one that we said we'd address after these motions, go ahead with, please. Okay, so that's, uh, we'll deal with that under items for future consideration. Is that correct? Uh, if you'd like, um, we could do that. Future consideration, okay. but. Do you... um, Clerk Renee, Mayor Allen. Go ahead. You, Mayor Allen. Go ahead, Clerk Ainsworth. Uh, thank you, through you, Marilyn. Um, so I do want to clarify, Cl Councillor Ritchie, your uh, your notice of motion with ditching was dealt with, so you don't need to bring that forward again. It'll be listed on the next uh, the next agenda. Um, okay. So it would just be any new notices of motion now. Okay, I, I have one more. I have one more. Just a minute here. Oh, here it is. I had it written down. Be it resolved that this. Can I go ahead, Mayor Allen? Yes, go ahead, please. Be it resolved this council direct public works to bring a report to council and how they are going to expand the parking lot at the Or Lake Park this spring and further bring a report on how to build a parking area at the Carson Road and Street on open road allowance uh, this year on or before the next council meeting. Thank you. Okay. And you you you'll you captured that, Clerk Ainsworth. So there's no discussion on that at this point. Uh, we just okay. Any other notices of motion? Okay, moving on to item eleven, items for future consideration. Other items for future consideration. Now this was so help us out, Clerk Ainsworth. What did you say should be included in items for future consideration, given? Councillor Ritchie's, uh, help him out there, please. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I believe the item that was discussed earlier was the signage for the, the no littering, but that was dealt with through an amendment to 7.2. Okay, so no I'm items sorry, for future Mayor, consideration? Mayor, Mayor, I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, so in regards to uh, the ditching detail, that's already dealt with. Yes. All right. It Sorry, yes. it's getting late here for me. So, but thank you. Okay. All right. Can I have a mover and seconder to approve the bylaws, please? Deputy Mayor Coughlin, Councillor Ma Chapman, that the bylaw listed here and be signed and sealed by the mayor and clerk. 22-032 littering bylaw. All those in favor? That is carried. Mover and seconder for confirmatory bylaw. Councillor Cabral, Councillor Moore, um, that bylaw 2022-033 to confirm and adopt the proceedings of the council of the regular meeting held on April 20, 2022, listed herein be signed and sealed with the mayor and clerk. All those in favor? That is carried. Mm. Sorry, we're keeping you up, Councillor Hannah. Sorry about that. Um, um, adjournment, mover and seconder, please. Uh, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, Councillor Moore, that the regular meeting of the Township of Springwater does now adjourn at 8.32 p.m. to meet again at a regular meeting on May 4th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you and good night.